Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the College Express Podcast. Today, I am joined with two guests. To my left, I have... Abby. I am an SEO copywriter here at Carnegie Dartlet, and I went to Northeastern University in Boston. And to my right, I have... I'm Devin. I'm a marketing technologist here at Carnegie, and I graduated recently from the University of Maine. So today, we're going to be talking about how to find your best fit in college. I'm going to start things off by saying you might have noticed that we're in costume. It is October 31st. In fact, Halloween in our office. We're having a good time. Hope you're having a good time. So we'll roll with that. This podcast is going to be released at the start of every single month. So look out for us in November. We're going to be rolling out the answers to your questions Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday will be the full episode. You can follow us along on YouTube. Subscribe. Make sure to hit the like button so you're staying up to date. And we'll catch you there. So our first question comes from Marissa Dawn, 23, on Instagram. And she asks, what qualities do I need to look for in choosing a college? So Marissa Dawn, we have a couple of things that, in my experience, worked out very well for me. I picked up the qualities that I liked about schools the most. And you can break it down to any sort of things, but mine was definitely major. Major was a huge choice that I wanted to go somewhere that offered web development. I was always a nerd, still am. I love coding, that's what I do here. And that was number one on my list. Number two was extracurriculars. When you learn how to speak English as an extracurricular, <laughs> it's a nice thing. So I wanted to go somewhere that had unique things to do, not just your standard average of the day. So uh, depending on every single tour group that I went on, I was always asking, hey, what do you do for fun around here? And if the person that was giving the tour couldn't answer in a sufficient way, Uh, that was an immediate uh, red mark on mine of uh, this might not be it. Uh, Campus location, huge thing for me too. I wanted to go somewhere a little bit small, but I also wanted to have the experience in the city and we'll get to that a little bit later. Faculty to student ratio, that's also important to me too. I didn't want to be in these massive halls where I felt like just a number rather than a person. I wanted to have that connection with people. Greek life is something you might be interested in, not for me, but uh, just be aware of your surroundings and what's there. Uh, And also tuition, how am I gonna pay for this? So all those things, uh, what scholarships as well. So what I did was I created this big Excel sheet, had everything in there, and then I was able to pick and choose schools that I liked, rank them, and then say, okay, my number one thing is this, this school offers it, this one doesn't, what schools are in all of green, you know, all my green check marks are ticked off and try to figure it out from there. Every single school you should pick though is somewhere you should see yourself being. Don't just pick a college because you know you can get in. That might not be a good fit for you. So in my experience, that's the way. What about everybody else? I think the big one that I did not think about as a student, but I think about now as an adult, is career relations and alumni relations. Um, It's not something you might be thinking about right now in high school, but when you graduate, you want to have a good relationship with your school, you want to have a good relationship with your professors, with career relations. You want to have that lifeline for when you're stepping out into the world and you're saying, what now? And I think it's really important to think about that. And you can do research by reaching out to current students, current alum, um, and just even looking around on their website and seeing do they have a solid page dedicated or multiple pages dedicated to, you know, this is what we do for our alum, this is what we do for helping you find a job and everything like that. Um, Going off of that, one really big thing that kind of helped me determine where I went to school, because it was between Champlain and somewhere else, Uh, was job placement rate. You want to look at the job placement rate and you want to look at the wording of the job placement rate because if someplace has a 100% job placement, that means everyone's getting a job. They have a 80% job placement rate in their field of study. That means 80% of students are getting jobs in their field. If you look at it, that's kind of better because that means the value of your education is higher because you're learning to do what you want to do. Um, that's so, a, that's yeah. a huge thing. Uh, that's a really the big thing. Sorry. Exact same degree as yeah. my buddy that graduated. He has a job, but it's not in what we do. So yeah. seeing that number, yeah, 
and what and it correlates to is uh, you know tricky marketing people. Yeah, and that might mean that they also have um, recruiters who come on campus. Yeah. Um, like I know Champlain had some for coding people as well yeah, as um, like the, they have a really big game development um, place. So there are job recruiters for game development. They didn't have it for my major, but I still ended up getting a job in my field within like. A year or two so um, looking at those numbers is very very important and what internship opportunities they have because internships are super important um, it lets you look at what you're gonna be what you want to be doing and the earlier you can get internships the better because then you can like decide software you're like oh I really hate coding I want to be in video development or something like that so it lets you see early on whether it is exactly what you want to be doing instead of sort of wasting your time taking classes that you don't actually want to be in. I think it's also really important to note that um, while you may be choosing um, a list and have kind of a finite list of schools that you want to go to, that might not be what it, it turns out to be. I actually originally wanted to go to school either somewhere warm in the south or way out west in maybe like Arizona or something. But um, I ended up, you know, applying to a bunch of different schools because they had all of my um, green checks, as uh, Tyler said. And um, when it came out to it, even though some of these other schools had more attractive things to me, it was the school that kind of reached out to me and told me um, how much they could do for me as far as scholarships and, um, you know, accommodating my lifestyle, which was really, really awesome. So. Um, I guess it, you don't overlook choosing the college before you know hearing back from some um, applications and getting some scholarship and financial aid offers because I think that was a huge deciding factor when it came down to like that last week of choosing a college. And I think obviously for a lot of people the financial aspect is a huge deciding factor because sometimes a school that would otherwise be absolutely perfect for you is just not. It's not in the budget, in budget um, so you have to think about, you know, like Devin said, financial aid and everything like that, um, because obviously if you really want to go to school, you can probably make it happen, um, but that's going to take loans and, and a lot of thought, a lot of research, um, so obviously that's a big factor to think about as well. Yeah, and you know, you have to think about yourself, um, you know, obviously, ideally in four years you'll have a degree, but, you know, you want to limit the amount of debt and stress that's going to be on your shoulders because that is a it is a huge transition kind of coming into the, the real world and kickstarting your career and to have that extra baggage just from uh, you know spending the last four life the last four years of your life learning is is kind of debilitating sometimes. I would say if I had the option to go back and do it again, I would probably go to a less expensive um, public institution instead of a private. Yeah, I hear um, I hear a lot of people saying that they really wish they did their first two years at a like a community college and then transfer out, which is um, what a good friend of my best friend growing up did, and then eventually went up, went up to you may the same school and right. graduated. You know with me as well but paid about you know, half the cost yeah, right yeah there are different options you yeah. know to make it work um, for your budget but I think you know definitely if budget is one of your concerns like don't rule out public schools or state yeah. schools just because you think they're not as prestigious they're still accredited universities yeah. they're still yeah. wonderful schools with wonderful faculty so you know don't limit yourself by thinking small picture like that I think uh, yeah. it doesn't matter where you start, matters where you end. Yeah. That's it's a big yeah. thing that um, I, I was told by yeah. some guidance counselors in high school. That's, yeah. uh, especially curriculum is going to be the same for most yeah. of the base that you're doing. So as you mentioned, going to a community school for two years, you can get that base and you might learn, you might not have what major you have in mind when you enter school. So if you're going to save some money, Now's yeah. the time to do it. Get your gen ed stuff out of the way. Yeah. Exactly, and then you can transfer those credits to someplace that really fits with you and might have not been in your budget initially, but you go from four years to two years, makes it a little bit more manageable. Definitely. Two things going off that. Um, number one, uh, something you mentioned was about the prestige. Don't go just because it's a brand new school. Harvard is not made for everyone. And I don't say that to say, like, not everyone's smart enough to get into Harvard. I, that's not what I mean at all. I mean that You can go to Yale, too. Yeah, you can go to Yale, exactly. Um, Yale might star. just be a better fit for you. Like, 
geographically uh, and culturally, and I don't mean like that there's two separate cultures of people on campus, I mean that there's like a different campus culture to every single university in the United States um, and around the world. There's a different campus culture and you, you're not going to fit into every single one of them. Um, and that's totally fine. If you don't fit into the, the campus culture of a brand name school, you can go to a non-brand name school. And you know what? You're going to get a fabulous education. You're going to have tons of fun and you're probably still going to get a job. <laughs> So, and by probably, I mean, you will still get a job. <laughs> <laughs> like waiting <laughs> for that. <laughs> no, you will still get a job. I mean, none of us really went to like a, a big famous school. So, I mean, Northeastern's pretty big. Um, but I like, know, for, 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 <laughs> we, yeah. 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 well, yeah, I mean, touching back on the internship thing, I think that's a super important aspect as well because. You know, with Northeastern, I chose it for the co-op, not for the brand, not for the size or anything like that. Um, turned out it's more beneficial for Northeastern students that are in marketing or business or finance. Um, and, you know, my brother, for example, is also a Northeastern grad and he had two co-ops and his second co-op offered him a job after graduation and that set his career off to a, a great start. Um, but for everybody, it's a little different. And so... You have to think about that, but again, it is, it's a great way to find out, do I actually want to be working in the field that I started out yep. studying in? Um, and if not, how can I remedy this? Yep. So that's why I chose Northeastern. Yeah. I think with Champlain, the biggest thing for me was I knew what major I wanted to go into when I started. And they have this thing called upside down curriculum. So when you're a freshman, you're taking courses in that major. So that's another thing to look out for too. Yeah. Look at the curriculum and see that. what's yeah. what's offered, uh, because that that's that's such a, a great opportunity yeah. that if you jump in, you don't like it. Yeah, you, you have, have that opportunity yeah. to bounce right out. It's fabulous. So, um, and then the second thing going off of that stuff is talking about debt and stuff and how generally people say, you know, I wish I'd gone to the public cheaper institution. I am proud of my decision. If I went back, I would still choose Champlain mm -hmm. every single time. And I, I do have student debt. That's that's a reality that I have. And I wish I had less of it. If I could go back, I would do better in high school. <laughs> so I got more scholarship, mm -hmm. honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and I would have signed up for College Express <laughs> plug, um, a bit sooner um, than in undergrad and, and used like the scholarship search and things like that. And I did get some, some sort of outside scholarships, but that's, that's you know, another option too is looking for outside scholarships. It doesn't all have to be through the institution. Um, and there are, there are plenty of ways to make going to college cheaper. And if you're going in as sort of a moderate student, you can also appeal sort of the second year to the financial aid office and say, look, I have gotten straight A's. Uh, I am, I've been on presence list both semesters. Is there anything else I can do for financial aid? And you can appeal and you can ask for more money. Um, I have several friends who ended up doing that and they, they got more money. So they are very, you know, they're understanding. Exactly. Every, everybody that I've talked to and met with on, on boards and stuff like that have been, you know, they know mm -hmm. what, what, uh, you know, undergraduate students are going through and yeah. they know that, you know, we are on a tight budget. So yeah. they're also, pretty understanding. It's also a benefit you can look for um, post grad. A lot of companies, I was reading an article in like Forbes uh, that said a lot of companies are now doing student loan repayment. You may have to yeah. stick with the company for like five to 10 years, mm -hmm. but. They don't like pay your loans, might as well stick with them. <laughs> so, some, some things to look out for, some things to think about. Yeah. I think uh, even just jumping back to not money related, yeah. but uh, for culture wise, a lot of schools will offer like a night over type deal. Um, before you're even accepted, you can just go and spend a night with a group of people like it, and live in the dorm and experience that. So I use that to my benefit a few times of staying over a night Depending on who you get to, uh, yes. it could be good, it could be bad, and mm -hmm. that might leave a bad taste or a fantastic one in your mouth, but that's a great opportunity to take, and especially any orientations that they have, any open houses, anything like that, just even, get out there. Even visiting friends, too. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I, I converted a friend over to, to transfer to my <laughs> right. school just because he came over and visited and had, a, had an absolute blast. I think any way you can find a current student, whether, you know, if you played a sport with a current student at a school that's yeah. on your list, you know, yeah. reach out to them even if you weren't best buddies. Yeah. You can just say, hey man, what's what's your experience been like? Yeah. You know, what advice do you have to offer me about the school? Yeah. And um, a lot of schools offer 
you know, student stories, student spotlights, get in touch with current students. And a lot of students that love their school want to talk to prospective yeah, students and say, yeah. hey, say, you should come here. I was very proud to right. talk about yeah. my school. Right, and, right. You know, I, I even gave some family friends that were just on campus giving me a tour. And I was like, I'm going to give you my personal tour. And, like show you <laughs> all the real like cool stuff that they don't really cover right. on the, the standard tour. And, yeah. And so, it, it's cool. It's kind of gratifying to see uh, somebody else get some enjoyment out of your here on campus. So find you a Devon at yes. school that you're looking to go to. Come visit me four years ago. And um, you can also talk to your guidance counselor and see if any recent alum from your high school yep. um, go to that school and see if they can connect you with them, whether it's through email or, or social media or some way if possible, yeah. or even having you meet them while you're on campus. Um, did, sorry, so that they that. can, um, so that you can have that experience and then see where someone with a relatively similar background to you fares at that school mm -hmm. um, as well. And it's so easy to network now with like you just hop on Facebook and you can type in the name of the school and probably you see like which one of your friends have made eventually exactly. made it there. And that's exactly what I did and I just shot somebody a message, asked them how they liked it and they ended up becoming a good support group to to eventually when you go to that school you have uh, you have community there. So socialize. <laughs> yeah, even uh, Rachel who was on our last podcast is an admissions person. So if you don't, for whatever reason, have a good guidance counselor, you don't have friends, like me, <laughs> you can reach out to uh, somebody that's working at the school and they'll be more than happy to help you. Rachel was very ecstatic on our podcast about she loved when people would come in and talk to her one-on-one -on -one, and she was able to give them that experience and also that set up a good connection for them when they're trying to get into the school too. She already has that name recognition of, oh, this person's interested, I'll pick them over somebody that has kind of similar grades and similar extras, but you know, they've shown interest and they want to come here. So. Okay, our second question comes from Corinne Michelle, 13. It's a twofer. Um, so she says, I'm scared about making friends in college. And how do I choose a college without being persuaded by my parents or friends? Um, so I think I'll address the second part of the question uh, first and say it's obviously easy to be persuaded by friends and family, um, but with a decision this big, ultimately it comes down to you, to what you want and what you need in a school. Um, briefly touching back on the financial aspect that we talked about, you know, obviously it's tough with your parents being such a big part of this decision-making process. If they're the ones that are taking out loans or paying your way, you're gonna have to communicate really clearly with them about what you want and need in a school and make them understand, you know, this is, what I'm looking for and, and is this going to work for our budget and is this okay, you know, in terms of what you're looking for for me. Um, but again, it is ultimately your decision, um, school you're going to, no one else. And yeah, I don't know if you guys want to chime in before we move on to the friends aspect, but. Uh, I can jump in for that one big time and not on the parent side of things, but on the friends. Uh, a lot of my friends are not book smart. They're very much street smart and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, feel free to go not to college and go to like a trade school and uh, you're gonna be fine. But um, a lot of them weren't going, they weren't leaving anywhere. They were staying in my hometown, which is fine again, but uh, I really wanted the experience to get out. But on the exact same hand, my girlfriend, we've been together now for over 14 years. Oh, you mean you're married. We just your got wife. married. <laughs> my girlfriend at the time. Um, <laughs> She also was very much, I'm staying in this area, I want you to stay here, and that's great. Uh, don't let anybody hold you back. You go live your life and you find the school, as we just talked about, the best fit, what, what college works for you. And when you have that connection, go for it. If it doesn't work out, you can always come back. But if you're not taking leaps in any regard to your life, then what's the point of, of living it? Like, you should be out there pushing yourself and enjoying everything. So don't let that hold you back if you have the money to do it. Uh, and if your parents are, you know, fronting some of the money, then that is a huge factor. And but at the same time too, if your parents are like, ah, I don't want you to leave home, I don't want you, to brush it aside. You, you go yeah, where you want. That's go. a whole different story. If it's not financial yeah. and they just don't want you to leave them, time to cut the cord. Yeah. You're leaving. Let this bird fly. Yeah. <laughs> to an extent. I, I, I want to add in that I don't think you should 
even care or consider about where your friends are going because you, I promise, no matter who you are, what you're into, you're going to be overwhelmed by the amount of people you meet and, and build a relationship with in that first week of college. And if you're, if you're making your college decisions based off of where your friends are going, I guarantee you're not even going to end up spending most of your time with them. I, I went to college with two or three people in, that were in my high school, and we were good friends, but I never hung out with them once just because I had such a big group of, of friends. I actually have, you know, more friends that I can say that in in that my college town versus back home in my uh, hometown. So um, I wouldn't really let your friends be a factor. I wouldn't worry about friends at all. Um, in that in that first week they have so many opportunities to meet people it's almost like you're forced to to make friends um so don't worry about that and um i think that the the feeling that you know um is when you know that a college is right you don't you won't have to deal with any persuasion um and that kind of i said that really badly but <laughs> It comes through, it really came through to me in my college visit. I think visiting the campus, being, having your feet on the ground and walking around, viewing the other students is so crucial because in that moment was when I, I kind of had this aha feeling of this is where I want to be, this is where I want to spend the next four, four years of my life learning. And, um, you know, other other schools, I you know, I, I did feel like, oh, this this would be cool, this would be fun, but I could really see myself somewhere. So I think um, taking a visit, going there, taking a visit, taking your parents with you to you know, so they can see and and kind of be immersed in the space is is crucial. Yeah, I um, I kind of knew I wanted to go where I wanted to go uh, when I got to a prospective students' day or an admitted students' day. Maybe it was both, and I just. My mom was there with me and she was kind of just, just there and I was sitting there talking to the people next to me, making friends uh, on admitted students night. There was kind of a two, or it was kind of a two day thing where you could show up on Friday and they had a mixer and I, I talked to some people and afterwards I went up to my mom like, hey, I'm going downtown with these guys. Uh, see you later, I'll call you when I need a ride back to that hotel. She's like, okay, bye, mm -hmm. have fun I guess. <laughs> Um, so I kind of like abandoned her and like immediately started making friends and um, I still well, talked to <laughs> that, that's how you know it's a good thing <laughs> but like yeah. also don't talk to strangers <laughs> um, but so like I, I I wasn't afraid of making friends because I was like I'm already making friends and it's I felt comfortable there and I think that's you know what Demo was saying that's how you know you're you're in the right places because you feel that that comfort there and you don't have an issue making friends and my parents did kind of persuade me a little bit because uh, when I was like I think a freshman in high school, I was like, I'm going to college in California. That's mm -hmm. happening. And they were like, you're not going to college that far away. And I said, fine, but I'm leaving the state. Mm -hmm. So I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm, I'm like forever grateful that I, I listened to them for that. So I think as long as it, as long as they have like a backing for it. At the time, my grandparents were very, my grandpa, both my grandfathers were very sick and like, if something happens, we would like you to be nearby. And so that you you can be able to to get here relatively quick, and I said that makes sense. And and you know, I, I was talking about how you know I didn't I, I knew I wanted to come back to Boston after graduation, and I was like, well, that might be more difficult if I'm going to school in like Seattle or LA. So I get the backing. So if your parents are trying to persuade you, have them give you a viable reason, have a, a discussion with them. And if you're making an argument for a school that they don't like have a viable argument for yourself. Make it a discussion, make it a, a grown-up conversation where you're talking to each other and not yelling at each other. So be very calm and make sure that your parents aren't being the only ones who are persuasive. Do your research and persuade them as well. Yeah, I mean, I can speak to that because I actually started out in Florida um, at school and the only reason I went there was because I wanted to be far away and warm and it ended up that it was horribly, horribly wrong for me, and um, I'm, I'm glad I came back. Um, but I was both fortunate and unfortunate in the circumstances that my parents were not at all pushy with me about it, and they said, Abigail, you can go wherever you want. We love you and we support you, and they're wonderful, wonderful people, and I will always love them dearly, <laughs> but I really wish that somebody had slapped me upside the head and said, no, you're not going to school in Florida, that's a dumb idea. 
Like what, what's your, what's your grounds here? Why do you want to go there? Um, and that's the thing is if you do want to go far away, have a reason other than going far away. So if you want to go to, you know, a certain particular school in a certain particular state, that's absolutely fine, but make sure that you're going to go to that institution and not to get away not a from, vacation. Yeah. Right. right. It's not a vacation. Um, I can tell you Tampa's not really that close to the beach. So, <laughs> Uh, if you wanted to go to the beach, don't go there. Um, but yeah, I would say make sure that you have real concrete reasons for going far away if that is what you opt to do. Don't let your parents persuade you in that way in that I'm just getting away because I don't want to be near my parents. It's not a good reason to pick a college no. or a place to live. You might need to reevaluate your relationship yeah. with your parents. Yeah. Like, especially and, if, like most parents, they're helping you pay for school yeah. or... You know, you got to take that into consideration. Yeah. I think, you know, there's there's a certain level of persuasion. Like, I maybe dealt with a little bit from my parents where there was some pushback. But at the end of the day, your parents generally know what's best for you, especially if they've been through the process themselves. They have some experience. Um, so I think don't just take everything that your parents say and, and just shove it away and say like ah that they don't know old mom just doesn't know what she's talking about they really do have some insight and they want what's best for you and especially when it's on on their dime you you have to listen to them like abby said yeah and um oh, what was my <laughs> uh Parents. Oh, sorry, I parents. No, no, I, no, I, I had yeah. it in the middle of it, and I was like, I'm going to form this point later, but no. <laughs> we'll get back to it. I'll swoop in. Yeah. So, friends, again, back to them. Um, I think it's interesting to think about, you know, my experience. I was not being pushed in any particular direction by my friends. You know, none of us were trying to pack to go to all the same school or anything ridiculous like that. Um, but I will say that you know, I am one of those people that is still best friends with my friends from high school and some of my friends from elementary school and some of my friends from when we were rink rats when our older brothers were playing hockey, we were three years old. So those people are all incredibly important to me. And we all went to different schools all around the country. And we came back after our four, five, some of us, six, seven, eight <laughs> years of schooling and still were best friends. So and even every every holiday break was like exactly. great to yeah. go home and exactly. see all your roles. So you have so a almost made those friendships yeah. a little exactly. better to be. You have, you, know, you have your phone, you have yeah. social media, you have every single, you know, platform has a way that you can talk to and even see your friends yeah. from hundreds and thousands of miles away. And then you also, you always come back to the people that mean the most yeah. to you. And if you guys are going to have a lasting friendship, it doesn't matter if you're here and here or right here together, you will still be friends. I swear to God. And it's okay to grow apart from them. Yeah. It's, it's completely it okay to grow apart from the high school matter. friends. It's, I, it hurts up front, but um, it, it does get better. And you are, you're, I know, Corinne, you're very nervous about making friends, but it's, I promise you, you're, you're gonna make new friends and they're gonna last for a while too. And it's great. Yeah, yeah I don't I, I don't never... mean to say that all your high school friends will be your best friends forever. Yeah. I just mean in my particular case, which is great, but making I'll new friends forget. is one of the coolest parts about college as well. Yeah. I'll never forget the amount of energy on like that first two or three days of college. I could not keep track of anybody's name just because like throughout the day, just so many names like Oh, so what's your name? Where are you? Like, what dorm do you live in? And, yeah. And I would just, like, have all these faces and not even be able to, like, keep track of all these people that are just there thinking the same thing that you yeah. are. You know, they're all there, too, like, looking for their group and trying to make friends so they can make these great memories at college. So you're, no, you know, you're not alone. I think everybody is, is, in, that some, is in that boat in some degree. I think going off your point, too, is when you're in college, that's when you're becoming who you are. And those four years of your life, you're gonna drastically change. But for me, I don't know about you guys, but definitely a lot of developmental things were going on during that time. And everybody that was in the school with me had that same thought of thinking and they wanted to be there for the same reasons. So those are the guys that, and girls, that you end up relying on. You, you're more friendly with them than, as you said, you got friends that you're from high school and middle school. I do too, uh, but I always joke that I have one friend that I just known him for so long, 
we would not be friends today otherwise. Uh, it's the same with my best friend. <laughs> yeah, like Devin's met this kid uh, a handful of times. He's you know just an out there character. So you're growing in that time. You're going to meet a ton of people. It's really easy to make friends with people that are in the same thought. At the same are. time, too, don't go into freshman year your first day saying like. Oh, I'm I'm gonna totally change of who I was in high school, and I'm gonna reinvent myself as this new person, because that just doesn't Oops. work. I tried to do that too, and I just I found that it was weird, and and I don't know. I eventually found a great group of friends, and found that like it was just stupid to not be myself, and yeah, that you can't well, force it. Yeah, yeah. It, when you embrace yourself too more, like that's when you start finding the real yeah. your you know the real group of friends that. And you're Last definitely going to go through phases and yep. do some yes. weird, bizarre things in order to make yourself feel like you're being yourself. Yeah. And then you'll figure it out. Oh, yeah. You come out on the other end saying, hmm, <laughs> is that really me? <laughs> yeah. It makes for some great photo albums and memories. So, yeah. And then all then part of the ride. Ten years later, you talk to your friends and you go, oh, my God, do you remember when this? Yes. <laughs> and they go, yes, I have the photos to prove it. <laughs> Just wait. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if anybody talked directly about making friends for like the, that first week, uh, but if we want to jump on that boat too, where I was in a very unique situation where I missed the orientation night where it was like Friday and yeah. Saturday thing. Uh, I lived in North House, which Kara is very familiar with because she went to the same so school. <laughs> it's four blocks away in a residential neighborhood, so it's just surrounded by normal houses and you're in a normal house, but there's only 12 to 20 people, something it's like that. Bit. It's Under um, 20, I think. Yeah, it's a very small house. Uh, so I was in a very unique situation where I was in a house of about 20 people, didn't meet anybody the day before because I was on vacation. I came in the day college was starting, like the day before. And I was in a room with the force triple. So the two guys that I moved in with already knew each other. And that was very interesting. But it kind of forced myself to jump out of that group. I became friendly with both of the roommates, but they went away to go and like do different activities and everything for the first week. And I was like, okay, well, this is very bizarre. I'm in a room alone. So I like leave the room and I became friends with people that were on campus. And you just throw yourself in head first, go out there and meet people. Don't change yourself, yeah. just, just be yourself. Uh, enjoy all the different activities they have for you. A lot of them are fun. Some of them might not be. Yeah. But uh, like going on the boat in Lake Champlain was that's the best. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah. What a great night that was. So take the opportunities yeah. that they give you. Don't sit in your room. Don't shut the door just because you don't know anybody. Yeah, leave either. the door open. Yeah, yeah, I met so many people yeah. just leaving the door wide open and that hanging can't. out. That was how I made yeah. my first friend. Yeah. Was and I was in kind of a bizarre situation as well because I was a transfer and I was living in a freshman dorm in my sophomore year. Yeah. Um, but age ain't nothing but a number, no big deal. So I'm in a freshman dorm, I'm setting up my room and I'm blasting Rihanna, which was at the yeah. time just really <laughs> the coolest. Yeah. So I'm blasting Rihanna and a girl comes down the hall and she's like, I Ooh. love your music. And I was like, do you want to be my friend? And that was pretty much it. Um, so just put yourself out there, yeah. you know, yeah. I made a friend by asking for directions, yeah. like just yeah. talk to yeah. people, even if you're introverted and even if you're shy, yeah. just talk to the person who's sitting next to you in the lecture hall, ask questions, just be friendly. I used to eat breakfast with a certain group of people and two of them were like in my same major and we had the same class at the same time. So we'd go to breakfast at the same time and there was this guy who always sat alone. So he said, Hey, do you mind if we join you? And there were like seven or eight of us who would sort of interchangeably be there at the same time almost every day and we called ourselves the breakfast club and we were like my best friends freshman year and it was really great so just sort of it's going to be uncomfortable but For go sure. outside your comfort zone and start talking to people if you see someone sitting alone who you recognize from class or you recognize from orientation you know just just go say hey like do you mind if i join you or oh i see you're working on that homework assignment do you mind if i you know join you i've got to study too kind of thing which will happen. And if it's ever happened to you, you know how good it feels when someone comes up to you and just starts talking to you, says hi, or hey, I think you're in my class. You know, it, it feels great. And to be able to provide that to another person, that's wonderful. And then you're, it's a mutually beneficial relationship. And nobody starts freshman year with a friend group. It's not really yeah, like any other prior, like 
elementary through high school to kindergarten, everything. You kind of go through with the same people, and this is everybody's completely in the same boat with you know a fresh restart, and they're all look, going out there looking to to make some friends. So. And the cool I, part I think, is uh, coming from high school where you ba basically just have, you know, if you're an athlete and you play on a sports team, you know, there's so many extracurriculars at college these days. There's so many things to choose from. So no matter if you're a writer and you want to join, you know, a writing workshop type of group or a book club, or if you are an athlete and you want to do, you know, club sports or whatever it is. The cosplay club? There is a club for everything. Yeah. And you can find people that like the same things that you do, that do the same things that you do. And that's the easiest way to make friends at school because you're just going to be in a room together and be like, hey, we like the same stuff. Yeah. It's like the most basic part of friendships. <laughs> yeah. So funny story too, when you were talking about getting directions, again, going back to North House, I don't know if your house was the same, but we had a key card to get into the house. Did not know that. I had the key <laughs> to my room, which I thought also opened the key to the house. So... Everybody was gone. I could not get back into the house. And it was about one o'clock in the morning. So I was standing outside uh, for I don't know how long until one of the guys from North House rolled up. I was like, how do you get in this house? <laughs> how do you get in? And uh, so luckily enough, I met Robin. Robin became a good friend and uh, was able to show me in with a key card. So, yeah. you know, you never know how right. you're going to be yeah. people. Don't be afraid to look stupid. Because yeah. oh, I almost didn't ask easy. my yeah. friend Claire for directions, but it ended up she was lost too. Yeah. Because yeah. she was also a transfer and it was our first day on campus. So I said, do you know where this hall is? And she said, no, do you know where this hall is? <laughs> and then we we'll exchanged phone numbers. So yeah. <laughs> it all works out. Yeah. See, we have another issue where we had... Um, our door was being leased from somewhere else. We couldn't put the key cards on. Mm -hmm. we, got, we got an ex uh, Greek life house because they had lost their charter and they were like, let's get a new house for students. So we had actual door keys. And without a doubt, once a week, someone would forget their key. So you'd just kind of be standing outside like, hey, can I get in? And you know, you'd start chatting with the person who let you in or if you were the person who was letting them in, you'd start chatting and just, you know, Unfortunate situations can put you in a place to make friends. Definitely. So this is another two-parter that comes from Maddie Ann and the DFAJ. Um, the first part of the question is, how do I know my perfect major or what my major even is? And the second part of the question is, should I pursue a viable major or the major I want? Um, it's a pretty interesting one. Want to open it up? Well... I can start off by saying that if you're undecided and it's coming down to the wire, there's nothing wrong with being undeclared. Mm -hmm. And it's actually a lot of times a benefit um, because you have a lot of opportunity to get your general education requirements out of the way um, before you dive into a more major specific you know, curriculum. Um, so I would say if you're really undecided, you have no idea where your skill set really shines or what your passion is, that's totally fine. And I think a lot of people don't know, especially 17, 18 years old, that's not really, you know, not really high time to decide what you're gonna do for the rest of your life. And it's an expectation that's been placed on all of us very early on. Um, but again, if you don't know, you don't know, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I do think that you should be true to yourself and you should do, you know, do your due diligence about is this going to make for, you know, a good career option for me. But at the same time, you know, go with your gut. And, and I can speak to that because I started out as an English and journalism major. I actually was kind of shooed out of it by naysayers and my own anxieties about will I be able to make a viable career out of writing. Um, and lo and behold, I came full circle and now I'm writing professionally. So, you know, I would say it wasn't the worst thing that ever happened to me to switch majors. Um, but again, if I could turn back time, I, I think I would be a stronger writer if I had stayed in, in the writing curriculum, um, in the English curriculum rather. So, you know, don't necessarily focus too much on what am I going to do with this? Say, how can I make this mine? How can I be the best at what I am skilled and passionate about. Um, and, you know, I would say that makes for the most successful and viable careers, in my opinion. 
should I pursue a viable major or the major I want? It's the same thing. <laughs> um, every major is viable, even philosophy majors, even English lit majors that we say, oh, the, you're not going to get a job with that. You can get a job with that. With philosophy, especially, there's a lot of writing. With English literature, there's a lot of writing. It's how you use that degree um, that really pushes it forward. And, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you, you learn so many different things in your majors that you can apply to so many different um, different places, different careers. I learned how to do web design in my major, which I don't use on a daily basis, but I have had to use at different points in my jobs. Like it's carry yourself down behind the scenes. <laughs> Tyler's just the face. Doing his job. <laughs> Doing his job. I don't, I don't do that. But like I have, you know, every once in a while Tyler will be like, oh here's this web code stuff. I'm like, I understand that. Mm -hmm. And so, so you're you're gonna learn stuff that isn't necessarily like that. That you might say, well, this isn't my major, but it is your major, and it is your job. And just like learn as much as you can. And and I, I again, I believe that you know, viable major and major I want is it's the same thing. Because um, even if you do have like a non-viable major, I hate that phrase, but <laughs> if you have one of those, you can always use it to to do a stepping stone for grad school. There are plenty of like. A friend who was a classics major, and then he went on to law school. But he right. just needed that that classics degree. There are so him many law options. Yeah. There are so many degrees that are so dynamic, and also, you know, like Carol was saying, just electives and the gen ed requirements are making sure that you're having a well-rounded education. And yep. you're walking away with a degree not just so you are, you know, a so-called expert in this major. Um, but so that you're an educated individual and, you know, you, you're a step above what you were before. And I think that's important, too, to think about for undeclared majors as well, especially if you are undeclared or undecided. Thinking about a liberal arts college, great, great choice, um, because their whole focus is on, you know, providing students with this breadth of knowledge and making sure that they have a really well-rounded education. And that gives you a lot more options out in the in the professional working world and everything like that. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. I, I don't think there is a major that is not viable. It depends on what you do with it. Yeah, yeah. I think this that second part about a viable major kind of speaks to my um, college application process a lot. Um, in high school, I was really in love with uh, film and editing. Um, I had taken some like advanced courses through high school and I was almost like dead set on this, this is what I want to do for a career. Um, going back to a question we were talking about earlier about um, dealing with pressures from parents, um, I feel like this idea of a viable, non-viable major was largely influenced by my parents. Um, you know, they kept asking me, well, what, what are you going to do with, um, you know, uh, are you going to be a director or producer? Like, it, and, it, and you kind of need to know the right people. You really need to start that at a, at a young age to get a foot in the door, which is something I didn't really have. I was approaching it from a strictly hobby kind of standpoint. Um, so I, I still included that in my college search. Uh, I, like Tyler, I was searching specifically for the new media major, which is a, a brand new... Um, uh, major that not a lot of schools were offering yet. So I, I still worked that um, film aspect into uh, my my major, but I wasn't, you know, putting all of my eggs in one basket, um, so to speak, with, uh, you know, that I think film is, is one of those majors that's, it's a big, um, people sometimes question the viability of it because it is a big risk, big reward. Uh, major and I, I did end up actually pursuing um, film and video production as a minor and it, it took no um, extra really effort out of my <laughs> major. No, I'm not saying because it was fun for me. Yeah. So it, it didn't take away from my major, it didn't detract from any of my other courses and I still got to pursue that um, that kind of industry a little bit without you know, paying for that to be my major. So I did get uh, an exposure of everything. Um, so definitely if you're, if you're unsure of, you know, something that you really want to pursue, but don't know if it's a 100% your career choice, and as Kara said, any, any major is a, can, can make a viable career. 
Um, but if you're unsure, minors are a great uh, way to address that. <clears throat> and also you can tailor your, your major and what you're studying. You can make anything out of it um, and kind of um, uh, tailor it towards your interests, what you want to do in life, and make it your, your own unique experience. More and more programs are offering specializations and concentrations exactly. of all sorts in almost all of their departments. So, you know, if, if you think maybe something might be too broad or too general, there's usually a way to cater it to what your real interests are within that field. Also, quick, quick follow your dream story that just popped in my head. Um, when I was in high school, I was working for this company, and there was someone there who asked me, you know, what was I going to major in college? And I said, professional writing. And he goes, that's, you're not going to get a job with that. I was like, well, I'm going to work in editing. And I was like, it's going to happen. And he goes, it's not going to happen. Uh, and he told me I should major in history instead. And I was like, I don't want to major in history. That's, that's not what I want to do with my life. He's like, yeah, but it shows you can do X, Y, and Z. And I was like, okay, I'll think of it as a backup. And one of my schools didn't have a good writing program so I was like all right I'll go for the history program and I didn't go to that school uh, a couple months ago he messages me on Twitter because I shared a, an article I'd written on College Express on Twitter and he goes great job on that College Express article I'm like it's my job and you said my major was going to be useless <laughs> so don't don't always don't listen to the naysayers exactly haters gonna hate it yeah I get two follow-up things on that is one is my uncle was exactly the same way when I was going around the table, it was like a Thanksgiving type deal, and just talking about going to college. And, you know, what are you gonna, what are you gonna do? Oh, I'm gonna make websites. Ah, you don't need to go to school for that. True. <laughs> so, if I was to do it all over again, I probably wouldn't go for what I went for. We're talking about Bible majors and what you pick. Technology changes so rapidly that if you are going into one of those fields, that's great. It worked out well. I have no regrets. But if I was to do it all over again or I went to go for a grad school, it would be with business. Use something that uh, is gonna complement what your, 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 your true drive is, like Devin saying, you know, video production and doing all those things. Try to pick stuff that would complement it really well and then you have two skill sets. Whereas technology is changing so rapidly that you go in, you can learn as things are coming out. I have a good buddy that graduated with me, exact same degree, and he answers calls for a living. That's what he does now. If you ask him anything about today, how do I do this? He has no idea. So that's another thing too is, yeah, you can go to school for four years, but if you don't use it, you lose it. And that's not just a muscle group, that's your your learning abilities too. Absolutely. Yeah. So viable major is, anything is a viable major. You go out into college, you get into a classroom, you're gonna learn critical thinking, which is gonna save you in so many different scenarios. Just going out with friends and hanging out, there's going to be something that pops out and it's like, oh, well, you know, in my experience from college, I did this, so let's, let's roll that. Um, same thing within the daily work life. Something might pop up that's way out of your scope. Never thought we were going to do a podcast and <laughs> here we are. Yeah. So it's uh, things, things happen and having those abilities to have creative thinking, roll with everything and that all came from schooling, so. Yeah. Um. We should probably cover the first part of the question as well. How do, how do I know what my perfect major is? Um, but how did everyone else know their perfect major? I think I, like Tyler, was very lucky in that I knew pretty much what I what I wanted to go for. But I would say about a third of the people that I, I knew from uh, school transferred or changed, or not transferred, but changed majors um, within their first year. Because um, just some people don't know and um, that the first year is pretty crucial and I know in my program they specifically tried to wean a lot of people out and, and make sure you know if, if you had a coding mentality uh, or if you didn't have a coding mentality that you weren't in the program um, some professors can be kind of ruthless um, so I, I almost think it's it would have if I were to go back and let's say I was completely undecided I would feel less stressed um, going in as undecided or um, would they call it like foundation sometimes yeah. now. Um, I would feel more confident doing that than going in with a set major that, you know, I didn't know if I was going to pursue. If, if I had the slightest shred of doubt that, you know, this is what I want to pursue, I would much, much rather go for like an exploratory learning major, which I think it, just about every school does. 
think that's, you know, for some people it just kind of falls into your lap. And I think that was the case for me is that writing was the only thing that I consistently felt like I was skilled at and I enjoyed. Um, so it just kind of was a no brainer for me. But I know a lot of friends that it took a lot of, you know, thinking and researching and talking and networking. And reflecting and on your that. own personality too, yeah, I think right. it's huge because, you know, um, you might like business, but the, the business mindset, the culture of, of business and finance is, is atrocious in my, in my opinion. <laughs> I would never want to be there, but it, you know, some people love it. Some that's what some people gravitate towards, but, um, I, I think love it's it hard to think about it sometimes when, you know, when you're thinking about schools and you're thinking about majors, it doesn't always translate to a specific job or a specific profession. Yep. Um, it might be an umbrella over, you know, many different fields, many different jobs. And I think that's where people get stuck is they say, well, you know, I have the personality and the skill set to do this. What do I study in school to get there? Um, but that's where you, you reach out to schools and you say, you know, what program is right for X, Y, and Z, um, and you know, you just gotta do your research. And But again, you don't have to decide what you're gonna do for a job for the rest of your life before you even step into your institution of choice. Um, it's all about, you know, the education at large, at whole. Yeah, I would um, say before you decide your major, decide what interests you and what kind of, what your strengths are. Um, there's a lot of really great tools out there um, one being a, an in-house one we've been developing called uh, Darts, which um, kind of breaks down your personality by uh, color, and each color represents um, kind of just a, a different um, <clears throat> personality trait. And I think doing something like that is extremely helpful in seeing, um, you know, the type of work environment you'd want to be in, the type of worker you are. You know, are you a go-getter or are you somebody that um, is a more supportive? you know, take a supportive role or are you, you know, just a creative worker and, um, you know, really reflecting on yourself and, and asking, um, you know, what my strengths are, what weaknesses and what um, traits I will never have are, are pretty important on, uh, you know, deciding what majors would be, would work. I think even just in high school when you're taking your extracurriculars and what do you find enjoyable? jumping into those things and then saying well you know for example robotics was something i was in high school for so how do i take robotics and you know where does, where does that go that one's kind of an obvious jumping from robotics to coding but take something that's like hey i'm the you know, team captain on my baseball team you can be a great team leader so you take that experience and you can exactly with the personalities you find things that you like that you're good at that's where you're going to be the most happy so whatever you're doing in high school that's giving you that you should pursue. And don't necessarily do it just by the things you're specifically good at or just like, so working in editing, I have a lot of friends who are like, I love to read, I should be an editor. But then they get into the position and they're like, I hate this so much, I don't like this part of it, I don't like this part of it. And so look at the other parts of what it is you want to do before you say that's what I want to do. For me, I like making things look as pretty as possible, make it the best that it can be, and that's why I knew I wanted to be an editor, that's why I knew I wanted to, to get a professional writing degree, because I knew this would give me the grounding to do exactly that. Um, was I the best at it in high school? No. There were people who were way better at peer review than I was, but I was something I wanted to work towards. So. It doesn't have to be the thing that comes naturally to you. There are people who are like, oh, I'm a perfect singer naturally, but I don't want to go into that as a profession. They want to do something else. And you're welcome to have hobbies that are things you're naturally good at and you enjoy. But it, if it's something that drives you to do better, something that you want to continue to pursue, that's what you really want to get into with your major because then you'll you'll learn the new or grittier parts. I took right. a whole class on copy editing, which is nothing but here's all the grammar in the English language, and <laughs> I loved it. And Tyler would not. <laughs> yeah. But like, and that's the thing is you have to want yeah you have to want to put in the work and you have to want to struggle where others would rather rip their own hair out. And honestly, that's the, that speaks volumes about your yeah. your passion and your interest and your skills being willing to put up with that. And kind you of have stuff. to want to learn about it. Right. Because right. if you're like, I don't really care to learn about statistics, that's a right. big part of business. Right. So 
Yeah, yeah and that's, a, that's a great point to think about all of the encompassed things, yeah. um, you know, in your interest, you know, just because you like one part of it. You know, I like, and I know plenty of people that said, I want to help people for mm -hmm. a living, but they couldn't handle blood and bodily fluids. So nursing didn't work out, you know, <laughs> things like that. So you have to, you do have to put everything in perspective in that way and think, can I handle all of the aspects of this? And yeah, do they interest me? Exactly. Yeah. So this last question comes from Edwin4362 on Twitter, uh, and he says, for those of you who lived in the city during high school, how did you decide to go to college in the city or away from the city? Y'all ready for Town of Kara? Because Town of Kara is coming out. So I grew up in Boston. A lot of people will say they're from Boston. Boston. <laughs> but they're from New Hampshire or... Maine, Ooh. or yeah, I've been hours and they're like, I'm from Boston, oh, what part? I'm from Salem, that's not Boston. I grew up in Boston, I went to a Boston public school, it was downtown in Boston, I worked downtown in Boston. Hey, you guys, Karen grew up in Boston. <laughs> I grew up in Boston, yeah. which is a city, uh, and I loved it. A real one. A real city. I know people in Chicago and in, York, in LA and New York are saying, nah, it is a real city, believe me. We're legit. <laughs> uh, we're legit. And I, so I grew up Weird. down here. <laughs> All of us. Will be myself. Okay. okay. Sure. <laughs> sure. I grew up downtown in Boston. It's literal spinning distance from Fenway Park. So, okay. like, when I say I, I'm a city girl, I mean, and um, I went to school in Burlington, Vermont. It's a city, it's a city. A city. <laughs> Chicago and um, New York probably haven't even heard of it because it's not, it's not. The, there's more college students than anyone else and I think more cows and moose than, I'm kidding. Um, but it's, so it's the oh, biggest God. city in Vermont. <laughs> and I walked in there and I was like, this is cute. This is, oh, they're, so, they're trying to be a city. That's so nice. Um, so for me, it was extremely like rural and I kind, I really liked that because it had enough like city life that I could like, walk downtown and do stuff and there were places I could go at like 10 o'clock at night if I needed food or I had to run out and get something whereas in an extremely rural area you might have to drive like six miles before you see another person um but for me it was it was the boonies and I <laughs> I really liked that about it it was that it was this whole new experience for me going someplace that didn't have a metro <laughs> um so I, I decided to do that because I mean, partially because of the romanticism of like, oh, Thoreau went off to Walden and just wrote stuff. And I was like, I'm going to do that, but I did not. <laughs> um, and so, like, for me, it was a good idea. But for a lot of people, like, I had a lot of friends in high school who, who decided to stay in the city because they were uncomfortable leaving. And they're like, you're going to get attacked by a bear. And I'm like, I don't think so. But, like, thanks for watching out. And um, so it's, it's all about, like, what you feel comfortable with. Uh, more than anything else. Yeah, I did the, the almost the same. I grew up um, an hour outside of New York City in Connecticut and wanted to get as far away as home as possible. So I probably picked the northernmost college or university in the country. Um, maybe Michigan has some more northern <laughs> ones. But anyway, it was in the absolute middle of nowhere in the woods in Maine, six hours north of here roughly um and it was it was really cool because i didn't want to really be in that city environment where there you know was, was so on top of having the college your college there there's uh, so much else going around you i kind of wanted to feel like i was in this town that was completely taken over by my college and i almost feel like burlington with you know, Champlain and, and UVM yeah, right yeah. there. It it's, really is like, it's, it's a college city almost. If you go when there's no college kids around, like in the summer, it's kind of weird. <laughs> uh, yeah, I lived, I lived through really some weird. summers up in Maine and it the whole town just empties out and it's actually really like awesomely cool because yeah. it's like the streets are like the tumbleweeds will be going <laughs> down campus. Pretty much. Um, but I, I absolutely loved it. And I know people who did the exact opposite went from backwoods Maine to the city and they liked it too. Um, definitely, I think that's probably a bigger jump um, in my mind would be yeah. to go from somewhere rural to the city yeah. just because it's so different and there's so many systems like, you yeah. know, figuring out the train and the 
public transportation is tough and just the overwhelming amount of people. Yeah. Um, I had people like come visit me who like grew up in super rural areas and they were like, they were hyper aware and I'm always hyper aware just kind of naturally like being in the city like growing up like I need to know what areas to avoid and I'm, I'm aware of my surroundings but not like like that kind of thing where you're just very outwardly paranoid and I had a lot of friends who did that immediately and, mm -hmm. and I feel like if you're like growing up in the boonies and jumping into the city that can be something that's sort of an automatic thing like I sort of hear horror stories about people in the city and it's not that no, I would say it's. It could almost, you know, you have yeah. so you have such a big group of people and yeah. you know, around you that it could be more safe in yeah. certain circumstances. But um, it, it's a it's a big difference, and it's it's nice to know. Um, you know, I I never felt like being six hours away from home in the middle of the woods. I always knew that I had my home to go back to, or my my parents' house, I should say. Um, to kind of go visit the, you know, the urban. The city will always be there. The rural areas will always be there for you. Well, I think a lot of people, um, when they think of this, like going off to college thing, it's like this huge transition and you're leaving home and you'll never see like your parents again. And no, that's not how it is at all. Like I, I after graduating from college, I went back and lived with my parents again for a year and I felt like I was a middle schooler again and it was terrible. But um <laughs> No, kind of um, I still love my parents because friends are awesome. Yes. I, um, so, you know, those aspects of home and um, the unfamiliar are always going to be, you know, follow you wherever you go. So it's, that's not really was a, a big, that wasn't a huge stress factor for me. It was um, mainly the campus. And, um, you know, you go outside of the University of Maine campus and it, it's, completely like very weird um you know miles and miles between the, um, your neighbor's house and your neighbor but any college campus is going to be a campus you know it is it is truly like a safe space where you're going to have a community of peers like-minded with yeah. with yourself so um the the surrounding area sometimes doesn't have some impact sometimes it has a lot of impact but you know aspects of home are always there I feel like the thing that really pushed me was that being in a city, you don't get a lot of stars. There's so much light pollution um, that we like see. Like I, I live on sort of the edge of Boston, and so there's there's you know some stars in the sky, but if you're downtown, there's nothing. And in New York, there's nothing. And I went to Burlington, and my first time there, I saw a shooting star, and I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> And that might not be a big push for a lot of people that come from the city to like nature, no thank you. But like for me, that was that was a big deal. Like I've been a skier for a while, and that was a huge. That was another big deal for me was that I wanted to be close to a ski area in college because I wanted to pursue that more and be able to do that. And again, seeing the stars was just groundbreaking for me. I was out in the boonies in the summer for an event, and I was like. I didn't know there were so many stars yeah. that existed. And I remember it's the first really time cool. you kind of see like the outline of the galaxy. Exactly. And the moon, you're like, is it the, is that, 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 I there the whole time? astronomy <laughs> was fake for yeah. years. <laughs> I think if you're a city kid that's worried about not having the same, you know, options and resources that are available to you in the city, if you go to a school that's in a college town or more rural, more suburban, um, Colleges in 2018 have everything. everything. Yeah. They have absolutely everything that you could imagine. Cookie delivery services that run until four in the morning. Cookie? Cookies. Yeah. Yep. Fresh cookies. baked cookies. Cookie delivery. Yep. Yeah. 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 Everything. I mean, they have restaurants right on campus. There's restaurants around town. I mean, this is an opportunity to find some awesome mom and pop like bakeries and pizza shops and all that stuff in these little towns that. You know, in the city, every other pizza shop is the best slice in the city, but here you can actually find the best slice in the city, that type of stuff. Um, obviously, my experience is, is a little different. I went from the suburbs to the city, um, but I do know for a fact that, you know, schools just have everything available to their students that they could possibly dream of. Um, but I think it, it goes both ways. You're, you're giving some things up and you're gaining a lot of new things um, in in. You're right. Did you ever feel like overwhelmed by like city schedule, like running errands yeah. and stuff and I think traffic? For me, having grown up in Massachusetts, 
I had been in and out of Boston um, and I had family in New York. So New York was always overwhelming for me, whereas Boston was more my comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think a lot of time um, it was a little overwhelming for me to think about, you know, okay, well, I have to hop on the tee and go here in order to get to this place that I need to go in order to get to this. And it was just a little overwhelming at times. And I think definitely things like that, like public transportation, if that's new to you, it is going to be scary because this huge metal tube is flying down the street and you're like, what the heck is going on? But um, I think that it just, it gets easier in time and you kind of get into your routine. And again, you have a lot of other people that are stepping onto this campus with you and they might be from Oklahoma or they might be from down the street, but they can help you either way. Um, So yeah, I mean, make friends with city folk and, uh, and try to get their inside look on how to navigate and everything like that. But I think it's it's a brief feeling of being overwhelmed and then more of a excitement and anticipation for what's to come. Yeah, I had a similar experience to you, but I didn't go to a city as <laughs> Um So I, my hometown is very rural. Uh, you have to drive like 10 minutes just to get to a supermarket. So being in that environment and then going to Burlington. This is great, I can walk everywhere. Where I love Burlington because you were on this hill that was, okay, here's all the residential area. And then you slowly walk down and you get to the city and then you get to a lake and it's more rural. You had pretty much those three environments of residential suburb type area, here's the city. And then if you wanna go camping, jump on a boat and you're you're ready to go. And I love that because it was the opportunity that no longer do I have to drive 10 minutes to get anywhere. I can walk 10 minutes and I'm in any of those zones. Yeah. And I love that. It, but to kind of shoot myself in the own foot, I ended up living in Winooski for yep. three years. And Winooski is right outside of Burlington. It's and to walk from there. Burlington to campus for us, it was like a solid 15, 20 minute walk. And then if you wanted to go downtown, it was like another 10 minutes on top of that. I made that walk and it's rough. Uh, I've made that walk way too many times. Yeah, I mean, like the, I used to walk. Yeah, no, I Unless you place. go to the city, I mean, still a lot of walking in the city, yeah. but I did a lot of just like gotta go to my friend's house yeah. and just walk. And the thing <laughs> was that house. with going in, in Burlington, that we didn't because it was kind of a city. They didn't have um, they, they had cabs, but it wasn't like in New York or Boston where you just flag one down. It you had to call them, and we didn't want to call them and. This used to like take 45 just a little minutes to get a cab. Uber, Uber yeah. and Lyft, so it was like, we, if we went downtown for Ben and Jerry's, we were walking back up Mount Maine. <sighs> it is a, a very steep incline walking home. Going it's, down is fine. It's great. It's <laughs> beautiful. You get to see the lake, you get to see New York, and then coming back up, you're like, oh, oh. but you work off the ice cream. That's true. Very true. So, um, Think about the geographics, the topographical areas of where you're living. <laughs> Get a topo map of your yeah. campus. Or just look down and be like, do I want to walk back up that? But you guys are lucky now because you have phones with Uber and Lyft and you can just easily be like, you I can't. don't feel like, like <laughs> you can't like your modern technology that. back in our day a couple years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Those were big deals. And it was like, Honestly, like sometimes you would have to wait like 20 minutes for a lift. <laughs> even honestly, even in the city of Boston, I used to we used to call cabs and it would take 45 minutes yep. to get to my apartment selfie. Yeah. And when or I would want to get home, okay, show, like, that's, that's, show up that's really yeah. that's a that's yeah. the tough ride from from you know, northeastern to southeast. That's you got to go down a lot of one way streets. So that, that'll take you a while, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so. Do what's best for you, really. I mean, if you if you think I can't leave the city, it's not I'm not gonna be comfortable in nature of any sort, it's totally fine. My brother went to school in New York and I told him I went to Burlington, Vermont, and he's like, I'm never visiting New York <laughs> because that's too that's too much woods for me. And I was like, Okay, I I like New York, I'm I'm relatively comfortable in New York, but I it's not my favorite place to go, and it, for me that wasn't where I wanted to go to college. And I was like, that's fine, like you do your thing, I do my thing, and that's do what's right for you specifically. Right. Location is gonna land on you know differently on everybody's list of priorities. Yeah. It's it's but one aspect of a school, but if it's very important to you, that's that's what's important to you, and that's good to know. 
And that just goes back to the importance of the visit, the yeah. overnight stay. Absolutely. Meeting somebody, seeing the campus culture, maybe talking to a current yeah. student. Right. And if you do do a campus visit, one thing I would recommend to you as well, my mistake that I made at my first school, not Northeastern, was not exploring the surrounding area as well because you are going to want to get off campus if there is an option to do so unless you're out in the sticks yep. and you're six hours from anything. But if you are in a city or you know a city-like place yep. um, that has stuff going on outside of campus, you want to check that out as well. Yep. Um, not that you can't spend your four years just on campus grounds, um, but you might want to explore a little. Oh well, yeah, and Karen mentioned the mountains. That was a huge thing yeah. for us. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, we love snow. Uh, right, so if there's a skiing snowboard. Uh, and uh, the reason we moved to Winooski is because Colchester had the bowling alley. So yeah. now we're in the middle. Of the <laughs> <laughs> so. But it is something to think about because, you know, for me personally, the campus was beautiful. Everything seemed so perfect. I yeah. thought about all the things I'd be doing on campus and then I didn't, I neglected the outside of campus which yeah. was you know it was not what i was looking for yeah. um in a place to live so it's important to to do your research and, and take a look around at what's going on outside campus as well yeah that's and and walk the streets yeah walk up mount main um, <laughs> as well as going down take that walk walk yeah. from the dorm to a class yeah like walk, walk around right. take a lap around the campus because yeah. that's something that you're gonna have to do Every day, right, and exactly. make sure that's something you want to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, I walk from the recommend to the walk from to north north north. to Champlain. <laughs> it's so it's a pretty walk. I it's also nice. recommend visiting in the summer as well as the winter. Um, that's you're a going to school one. in the Northeast. Visit in the winter, and especially if you're from somewhere um, not, southern. Not or, yeah, yeah. If you're from so, like California, I had, <laughs> I had a friend from Texas. You always knew Texas was Texas because in October she would put on the park and be like, it's so cold, guys. We're like, it's 55, I'm yeah. still wearing shorts. And the opposite applies yep. because, you know, I, I'm a beach girl through and through. I love the sun, but I lived in the Caribbean for a month and it was the worst month of my life. So if you can't handle humidity, maybe don't go to a tropical region. <laughs> yep. yep. So, yeah, be, be sure you do that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really important. That's more important, I feel like, than whether it's a city or not. <laughs> yeah. Where is the, the city? Is the weather? Are you yeah. physically uncomfortable for five months out of the year? Moscow Probably. or Miami. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. So thank you for listening to our episode of the College Express podcast. A huge thank you to Abby and a huge thank you to Devin for joining us today. You can follow us on collegeexpress.com to catch up to everything college. We have articles, lists, rankings, scholarship search, college search, we got it all. So go on down there. And also, if you like this video, please hit the like button, uh, subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions that you'd like answered on our future podcast, please write them in the comments below. Thank you for watching and we'll catch you next time.